I walk along the coast and the sea gently caresses my legs. He's holding my hand. A perfect morning. The waves immediately wash away my footprints in the sand. Behind him, he leaves pits with stagnant water in them. After all, he weighs 600 pounds. And he is the one holding my hand? Stop, stop, stop. There must be some kind of mistake. I wake up in a sweat. It's just a bad dream. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm 21 years old and I've won the bikini fitness category three times. You won't find junk food in my fridge and my exes are all overweight. So if you like me, run to the gym. I like people who work on their bodies. One day, I was late for an important meeting. I had to check out as soon as possible at the store, take a taxi, rush to the other end of the city, and what is that? At the checkpoint, there was a tomato man. Just an immense size. He took up at least two cash registers. I thought about abandoning my purchases and hurrying to the exit, but I didn't think I could squeeze into that small gap between him and the aisle. He was buying chips and soda. How appropriate, I thought. He seemed to hear my thoughts. Oh, you probably thought this was for me. <laughs> no, it's for my mom. I'm on a diet. It's been a week. I don't allow myself to eat any junk. Well, maybe just one can of soda. Diet soda, of course. He started laughing and the number of his chins tripled. Having paid for my salad and a bottle of water, I ran out into the street, but the taxi pulled away right in front of me. Lady, miss, hey, we can share a taxi together. Which way are you going? We could drop you off first. The fat man from the supermarket managed to hail a taxi before me. I didn't want to be completely late, so I had to agree. I climbed into the car first and pressed myself against the door to be as far away as possible from him. It seemed like it took an eternity for him to get in. Even though I was taking up very little seat space, he was still crowding me with his body. I tried to snuggle even closer to the door, but inevitably rolled down to my well-fed travel companion. He got the upper hand again. The car struggled to pull off the sidewalk. God, I hope it doesn't break down from being overloaded. You are so small. Sorry, I've completely squashed you. A month ago, I was even bigger. I've lost a good amount of weight since then. He smiled again. I looked out the window. I didn't want to carry a conversation. There were traffic jams. We were barely moving. I'm Ross. What's your name? Amy? Like Amy Adams? Beautiful name. Amy Adams is very pretty too, but you are even more beautiful than her. And you're in such good shape, Amy. You must be an athlete. Why was he saying all of this? Can we really not ride in silence? I wanted to get my headphones, but I couldn't even squeeze my hand into the pocket of my pants to get them. Ross wouldn't shut up. He told me that he was very thin as a kid. It was only in high school that he had to switch to hormone treatment because of a serious illness. The treatment was successful, but he had gained enormous weight, and along with it, a number of other health problems. He had not taken hormones for two years, but his weight continued to increase. He didn't know what to do. He smiled again as he finished his story. Enviable optimism. How old did you say you were? It was the first question I had asked the whole time. He was only 23. I thought he was much older. Before I bid farewell to Ross forever, I decided to leave him my business card. Ultimately, he wasn't any worse than the rest of the guys whom I've been helping for the second summer in a row. Although, I was sure that I would not see him again. A month later, the summer camp for overweight people began. 24 hours a day, 9 weeks in a row under my guidance and the supervision of my assistants. After all, I am a fitness trainer and sports and proper nutrition are my whole life. I was pleasantly surprised that this year there were twice as many people in my camp than last year. I was even more surprised to see Ross among them. I didn't know then that his attendance would turn into a real disaster. That evening, I walked by the house where Ross was staying, and I smelled something. 
At first, I thought I was just imagining things, but nope, I was definitely smelling it. A perfect, medium-rare beef patty. I hadn't eaten one in more than a year. It was the smell of a juicy burger. I broke into the house and caught Ross red-handed. Gotcha! You brought in contraband! How did you manage that? Who is helping you? He was silent. Does it have mustard and mayonnaise? Ross began begging me to give him a chance. One more chance. And suddenly he declared that all of this was only because of me. He said that he hadn't even thought about losing weight before he met me, and that the soda and chips from when we met in the supermarket were for him, not for his mother, as he had said. He lived there, next to the store. He didn't have to go anywhere. He just wanted to get to know me. He admitted that it would be very difficult for him to change his habits and lifestyle, but he was prepared to do so. For me. Lose 300 pounds and I'll go on a date with you, I said, and walked out. Ross got down to business. I know that it took a lot of hard work for him, and he really tried. But at the end of the camp, I didn't go on a date with him. He hadn't met the terms of the agreement, and I didn't want to deprive him of his motivation ahead of schedule. We stayed in touch. I supported him in every possible way. Plus, I even had something to learn from him. His optimism, kindness, openness. We went on a first date after seven months. Ross lost the weight. He lost 327 pounds and got himself in pretty good shape, if you don't take into account the sagging skin on his belly. Over time, I took a liking to him. We went on a few more dates, and then he became my boyfriend. We are still working on his body. We run, eat right, and go to the gym. To be honest, I've never had such a difficult case of weight loss with a client. I hope we succeed. And that's all. That was my story. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm 18. And if you take an x-ray of my stomach, you can see a lot of unusual objects. I think altogether they weigh several pounds. I can't stay alive with them in there. That day I had a date with Sydney, and I had invited her to a cafe for the first time. We were talking about something when I noticed that she was looking at me in horror. Is something wrong? I asked her, chewing my salad. Mark, you're eating a candle? I looked down at my hand, and it was true. I was holding a festive candle from the table's centerpiece. It had my teeth marks on it. I swallowed the piece that was in my mouth and washed it down with water. Uh, it happened again, I thought, but I didn't have a single idea of how to explain this to Sydney. I bet my sister that I would surprise you on our date. <laughs> Looks like I won. Sydney called me an idiot and left. I couldn't tell her the truth. We went to the same school and she surely would have blabbed about it to her friends, who in turn would have told their own friends. And within a week, everyone would be pointing at me and calling me crazy. In a way, they would be right, I suffer from pika and almost always want to eat something inedible. It started from birth, but back then, when I put dirt, grass, or pine cones into my mouth, it didn't seem abnormal. My strange taste preferences didn't go away with age. I constantly swallowed our cat's hair found on the floor, licked dust, nibbled tree bark and branches in the forest, and once, I even ate half of the pages in a children's book. Whenever we did home repairs, I ate a lot of the building materials. True, it wasn't without consequences. After the floor pain, I was in the hospital for almost a month. In every other way, I'm completely normal. Until the age of 13, I was homeschooled, but only because my parents were afraid that I would eat chalk at school, or worse. Little by little, I learned to control my appetite. I have a rule. Only eat what's on my plate. And it works. I've been going to public school for three years now and no one has suspected anything unusual. Until this date with Sydney. When I arrived at school the next day, someone tossed a candle on a plate at me. As I had suspected, everyone already knew about what had happened. I came home so upset that I completely forgot about my rule. While warming up dinner, I accidentally dropped it and broke a glass of water. I picked up the largest fragment from the floor and I put it on my plate. 
I ate and thought about how to resolve the situation at school. When I had finished the pasta, my fork hit something solid. I looked at the shard and tried to pick it up with my fork again. I can still hear the frightening scream that my sister let out. She had come into the kitchen at the exact moment and rushed to take the glass out of my salad. I was startled and didn't get a chance to swallow it. So that's my funny yet not very funny story. Now my parents want to transfer me back to homeschooling. A complete madhouse! Eh, uh, that's all. Thank you for listening to my story.